So, don't worry, I am not going to try to teach you anything tonight. I've, I've had four years to try and do that. If I haven't accomplished that goal by now, it's too late tonight. So, I'm not going to teach you anything, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to thank you and your older brothers and sisters for all the things that you have taught me over the past 21 years. Because you have taught me an awful lot of things. You have opened my eyes to some things that I was unaware of. So a little background first. Uh, I was born and raised here in Salt Lake City. I went to high school here in Salt Lake City, just like you did. 41 years ago, I graduated from the University of Utah, got married, and headed to California all in the same week. I figure if you're going to change your life, you want to go big, right? So I know it's, it's hard for you to believe, but I actually was young at one time. <laughs> and here's the proof. Okay. And by the way, the lovely young lady you see in that photograph is with us here tonight. I'd like y'all to say hi, hello to my wife. We piled everything that we owned in the entire world into a tiny, compact car, and we drove across Nevada heading to California with only enough money in our pockets to last us for one month's worth of living expenses. So as we're driving across California or across Nevada, I'm thinking to myself, we are starting from zero, we're starting with nothing. We need to, to, through hard work, pull ourselves up by the bootstraps. And I was wrong in thinking that. And in a few minutes, you're going to find out why I was wrong. And you are the key to how I found out that I was wrong. But I thought that we were starting from nothing. Uh, 20 years later, after working very hard in California, and I did work really hard, long hours, and she put up with, with me putting in many long hours and bringing home work with me. And, you know, we worked really hard. But it paid off. We, we really, we, after only 20 years, we had achieved our, our major goals uh, for going there, and we were in a position where we could say, okay, let's let's change our life, let's head back to Utah, let's let's uh, uh, try to give back to the community. And so we drove across Nevada once again, but this time heading east rather than west. And as we did that, we had a whole lot more belongings, we had a whole lot more money in our pocket. We, we had accomplished a lot. And I was thinking. Yeah, this is kind of the American dream. We started from nothing, and look what we've achieved. But, as I said, I was so wrong about starting from nothing. Not only have I learned a lot from you, but also the AIDS teachers. I have learned tremendous things from the AIDS teachers. One time, a couple years ago, I went into the coffee machine. I into the room where the coffee machine is, to make some copies for my class. And one of the other teachers had left this sitting on the coffee machine. So as my uh, as my copies were being made, I I looked at it and wow, it really hit home with me. And so I'd like to use it as the basis of, of my next few comments here. It's a it's a little graphic novel, comic book type thing. Some of you may have seen it before. Uh, talks about two people uh, starting from when they were very young. Uh, on the left side here, you have Richard. His parents are doing okay. On the right side, you have Paula. Her parents. Not so much. Richard's house is warm and dry. His shelves are full of books. His fridge is full of food. All his house is full of people and not much else. It's damp, noisy, she keeps getting sick. So Richard is the one that I clearly identify with. My home was not rich, was not, was not big, was not fancy. My family wasn't rich, but we weren't poor either. And so yeah, my, our shelves were full of books, fridge full of food. A lot of the students that I went to school with we're in Paula's situation, and I kind of sort of knew a little bit about it, but I didn't really appreciate it. Just like, like you, a lot of you are in Richard's situation, but a lot of you are in Paula's situation. And I don't know if you really appreciate Paula's situation and what she had to go through. I didn't. I didn't know about it. So let's continue with the story. Okay, so Richard's parents will do anything for their baby, and so will Paula's. Okay? That's why they're not here. You don't see them in the picture because Paula's family, they work at jobs that only pay minimum wage. And minimum wage is not a livable wage. 
Okay, so they had to have two jobs in order to make ends meet, much like many of you in this room and other students who have come through at AIDS. So Richard goes to a great school with well-resourced, good teachers who love their jobs. Now this is one where everybody in this room can benefit from this. I hope you guys really appreciate how lucky you are to be here at AIDS. It is a tremendous school. But think about your, your friends from, from your old school who are going back to, to the neighborhood school that you would have gone to had you not gone to AIDS. And they, their, their school is not so good. So Paula went to one of those schools. So maybe you can see why the expectations that were set for Richard might be slightly different than those set for Paula. Okay, so Richard's getting an, a B plus here and his parents are going, oh no, we've got to fix this. Paula's parents are going, yeah, not bad. Now, it's not because Paula isn't as smart as Richard. She could be every bit as smart, if not smart. And it's definitely not because she didn't work as hard as Richard. She worked every bit as hard, if not harder. But circumstances beyond her control made it so that the best she could get under those circumstances was a B. And her parents don't want to make her feel bad, so they're graduating for getting a B. Okay? Much like many of you in this room right here. So over the years, all of these little differences, they add up. And now you see Richard at his dorm room at the university studying while Paula is working, trying to make ends meet. Richard has a scholarship because all of his good grades allow him to get a scholarship that Paula wasn't able to get. Richard's parents have enough money and they can help him pay for college. Paula's parents don't have that. So all of these little things add up over the years. So Richard's dad has contacts. He can help him get an internship. Paula's dad is sick. She has to take care of him. She may not have health insurance. In fact, probably doesn't. Just like a lot of the people in this room and a lot of people that I've seen at AIDS who don't have health insurance. Let me divert from the story just for a little bit. This is a major thing for me that I was unaware of. I had no idea about health insurance. I just assumed everybody had it. Uh, when, I, when I was in school. And it, only later that I found out, no, there's a lot of people who don't have health insurance. The, the American health insurance situation is criminal, how bad it is. The, the, the way that health insurance is set up, and I, I'm not going to go into detail because it would take too long if I did. This is a political cartoon from Pat Bagley from the Salt Lake Tribune. I, I hope you all subscribe to it. He, he's amazing. So why is it that every other advanced country has universal health care, but not here in America? Here in America, it's tied to your job. If you lose your job, if you get so sick or injured you can't work, you lose your insurance right when you need it the most. And I know there are politicians who say, oh, but no, that's okay. We have programs in place for people who have higher need. Well, they don't, you don't qualify for those programs until after your entire life savings has been used up. They only then, all that money you've been saving for your time to all gone, only then do, the dire, do these uh, backup uh, things kick in. Uh, and and that's, that's just an outrage. Just, just, it makes me so mad. And so I have seen a lot of the students come through here where they, their parents were sick. They had to go home. They had to, they had to care for their parents. Maybe, maybe they had to, have to work because the parents couldn't work. So, the, so I, there have been times when I, I've said to a student, I said, hey, how, how come you don't have your homework? And they say, well, I had to work extra hours last night. And they're not working because they want to get money to go on a ski trip. They're working because if they don't, their family doesn't have enough money to pay the rent to put food on the table. A lot of people in this room are like that. And those of you that are not in that situation, I hope you appreciate it what your fellow AIDS students are going through. I didn't really appreciate that when I was in high school. I, I didn't know about that kind of stuff. Back to the story. Okay, so Richard is now an adult. Because of all these great things that he's enjoyed through his life, he now qualifies for a nice low in his home, home loan. Paula doesn't get the loan. And now here we come to, to the key point here. After all of these years, Richard starts to believe that he deserves to be on top, that he did it all by himself, which I am ashamed to admit was, was me before I came to AIDS. I thought that I'd done it all by myself. I thought it was the hard work that I did. Whereas Paula, she, she doesn't get that. And so here, the comic book finishes off with a little party where Richard has done something, you know, 
don't say what, but they're having a party to celebrate his success. Paula is working as a, as a server at this party. And so the guy says, hey, Richard, what's the secret to your success? And his answer is, less whining, more hard work, I say. I'm sick of people asking for handouts. No one ever handed me anything on a plate as Paula hands him something on a plate. Now, I hope that I was never as arrogant as Richard is. I'm not sure. I might have been. But I really hope I wasn't. So, one quick example of, of one advantage that I had that I didn't even know about until I came to AIDS. You know the home that I told you about. Not rich, not big, okay? But it was warm and dry, okay? Well, my father was able to purchase that home using the GI Bill. And I trust you've studied about the GI Bill in your classes here. So, my father fought in World War II. Uh, and when he came home, the government said, well, thank you for your service. We're going to give you these low interest loans as a, as a way of thank you. Well, there were other people fighting alongside my father, helping to preserve America's freedom in World War II. When they came home, they didn't get the GI Bill. And I didn't know that. I had no idea about this at the time. It's only after I came to Ames that I found out about this. And it wasn't because the GI Bill specifically excluded them. It's because Congress people from southern states where the Jim Crow laws were still very much in effect had put wording into the GI Bill that made it so that the GI Bill could be denied to people that, that you didn't like for whatever reason. And so a million black GIs who fought every bit as hard as my father did, uh, who risked their lives every bit as much as my father did, they didn't get the, the loans that my father did. So when I was your age, the home that I lived in, my parents had been there for about 25 years, they had purchased it for basically this much money way back a long time ago. And now 25 years later, it has now appreciated in value up to this much. But my, parent, my father's mortgage payments were still only this much because they had locked in with purchase at this low price. Well, my friends that I went to high school with who didn't get these benefits, if they weren't able to purchase a home, so they had to rent one. And so as the home value goes up, their rent payments go up. And so a huge fraction of their parents' family goes to paying rent, which I had no idea. I had no idea about this kind of stuff. Now, there are people in the world who say, oh, you're not allowed to talk about this kind of stuff. That, that'll, that'll make white children feel bad. That's critical race theory, dun, dun, dun. Right? It's, it's not critical race theory. It's history. Studying history will sometimes disturb you. Studying history will sometimes upset you. If studying history always makes you feel proud and happy, then what you're studying probably isn't really history. I trust you all recognize that quote. If you didn't, then Miss then Spencer deserves to go back and talk to your brain. And you, you should know. What, what is that quote? Somebody tell me, what is that? The Little Rock Nine, yes? Okay, and you know about that. So these, these obstacles that Paula and people like her had to, had to fight against, you know, sometimes they were subtle, hidden things, but sometimes they were blatant things. But I never had to deal with it. Now, there have been programs put in place to try and fight this. In terms of affirmative action was a thing for a while, but it's not anymore. Because people have come in and say, oh, you can't do that. That's reverse discrimination. You can't do that. So then they have these DEI programs, which are basically severely watered down affirmative protection. Really watered down. But even those are too much. Even those are not allowed. So all of these things are things that, like I said, I was unaware of before I came to this. And I, so I come here, and people that I meet, people that I, I come to care about deeply, are, are having to fight against these totally unfair obstacles that are placed in front of them that weren't in place in front of me. And I, I hope that you guys also realize that, that some of you are the Richards of the world, and some of you are the Paulas of the world, and I hope you, you recognize this. <coughs> One more thing that I, I need to, to talk about in regards to this, that I was, you know, before I came to Ames, I was aware of it, that it didn't really affect people that I cared about. LGBT issues. There are a lot of people in this room who are in the LGBT community. Now, the fact that I can even say LGBT LGBT community. Obviously, I can't say it. <laughs> the fact that I can even talk about a community is a tremendous step forward because when I was your age, there was no community. 
If you were LGBT, you were alone, you were isolated. So the fact that we now, we can say, we talk about the community, that's a big plus. But still, there's so much more. I mean, same-sex marriage, the, that community fought for so long, fought, fought so hard to get same-sex marriage, and they finally got it. But now, the same people that overturned Roe v. Wade are trying to overturn the same-sex marriage. Now, by the way, I should put in a legal disclaimer here for just a minute. Excuse me while I do this. If anybody from the Utah State Legislature is listening, please know that I am not promoting LGBT lifestyle. Okay? <laughs> what I am saying, what I am saying is that we need to acknowledge that LGBT people exist. We need to acknowledge that what they're experiencing is real. Okay? They're not pretending for nefarious uh, purposes. Okay? They are genuinely good people. And so, like I say, before I came to AIDS, I wasn't really aware of this because it didn't really affect people that I cared about. But now I have come to know so many wonderful, wonderful people, and it just infuriates me that they have to fight against these things. And I really hope that you will stand up and help defend. Okay. So, equal rights for others does not mean fewer rights for you. It's not pie. Now, some of you are probably thinking, wow, I had no idea Mr. Hendricks was this woke. <laughs> When you're in my classroom, I talk about physics, engineering. I don't talk about this. Because if the Utah legislature finds out that a physics teacher is talking about this kind of stuff, they might fire me. Well, hey, Utah legislators, go ahead and fire me. I got one week left. Do your work. <laughs> Yes, I am woke. And you are the ones who woke me up. You, you and your older brothers and sisters. There are people in this world, people in this country, who are, are fighting against wokeness. They want you to think that being woke is bad. What does it mean to woke? Aware of and actively attended to important facts and issues, especially issues of racial and social justice. How is this bad? I mean, seriously, how is this bad? It's, this is something that every decent human being should be fighting for, not, not fighting against. So, in conclusion, let me just say that if you are one of the people whose life circumstances make it so that you identify more with Richard than you do with Paula, be woke. <laughs> think, think of all your friends here at Ames who have gone through struggles that you probably may not even know about. Okay? Help them out. Don't fight against them. You know, when, when people say, oh, poor people are poor because they're lazy. No, they're not. You know, new immigrants to the U.S., you know, they're bringing crime, they're bringing drugs. No, they're not. LGBT, LGBT people, they're lingering, lingering in the bathrooms, you know, waiting to molest children. No, they're not. <laughs> so, you, you can all vote. Next, next November, you can all vote. Okay? Even if you're not 18 yet, okay, okay. With one exception. <laughs> okay, yeah, let's go, yeah. <laughs> Even if you're not yet 18, even if you're not yet 18, you can register now, as long as you will be 18 before, before November. That's this is the only way that we can change these horrible inequities. So, if you're Richard, please think about that. If, on the other hand, your background is such that you want to identify more with Paula than you do with Richard, do not despair. I have seen so many students come through these halls who have been the Paulas of the world. They had to work harder than their peers did in order to achieve the same things as their peers did, which is horribly unfair. That took them longer to achieve the same things that their peers did, which is horribly unfair. But they didn't dwell on the unfairness. They shook it off, they did the work, and they accomplished great things. 
One person I just need to tell you about. A student, two, two days ago, I got an email from a student. Actually, I got flooded with emails. Once word got out that I was retiring, and they was posted on the Facebook page, I got a flood of emails and direct messages that just melted my heart. And this one girl in particular, uh, she was here at age 15 years ago, one of my students, great girl, and she was appalled. I mean, she, the person who wrote this story, I think I, that her, they had her in mind. This was her. And so I haven't seen her, haven't heard from her for 15 years. I've often wondered, hey, whatever happened to her? What, she was such a great kid, whatever happened to her? So I get an email from her two days ago, and she says, hey, congratulations, and she thanks me for the things that she says that I did to her, I don't know. But, and so I responded, and I, hey, well, hey, what are you up to? So she graduated from Ames. She went to university, which was a lot harder for her because of these issues. But she, she put in the extra work, put in the extra time, graduated from university. Then she went to law school, put in the extra work, put in the extra time, graduated from law school. She is now a successful attorney. And get this, it gets even better. If she could have gone to work for some big corporation, helping do mergers and acquisitions and making a ton of money, she didn't do that. She became an immigration attorney, helping underserved people fight to, to get into this country. There are so many people who, they meet all of the requirements that are needed for, for coming into the U.S., but they, they have to fight through this horrendous maze of regulations and things. So, so she has to leave. What an incredible agency of thing to do. So cool. So, let me just say, again, thank you for all the things that you have taught me, really important things that I was aware of before I came to this. You have taught me, you have inspired me. I am so grateful. It has been a tremendous privilege to work with you over the past 21 years. So, thank you very much.